In this problem, we're told to use the method of cylindrical shells to find the volume generated by rotating the region bounded by the given curves about the y-axis. So this is number three, and we're told that y equals the cube root of x, y equals zero, and x equals one. So we have our two functions here, and then we're given uh, one of our bounds. And so I'm gonna go ahead and graph this here. So this is gonna be our graph. If you graph y equals the cube root of x, it should look something like this. And so you don't always need to graph these problems to solve them, I just find that it's uh, very useful. And so this is what the curve kind of looks like. It's not that good of a drawing, but just imagine. And so this is y equals the cube root of x. Uh, one of our other curves is going to be y equals 0. So keep in mind, we're only going to be focusing above this, basically. And then one of our lines is going to be x equals 1. So if I go ahead and draw this, this is x equals 1. This is y equals 0. And so keep in mind, we're rotating around the y, the y axis. So this right here. And so if you look at our... Uh, what we form when we do this. We're going to be trying to find the volume of this area right here. And so the volume when you use cylindrical shells, you're going to use uh, this formula. Volume equals 2 pi times the integral from a to b of, or a to b of r times h, so radius times height times dx or dy, depending on which one you're rotating around. If you're rota rotating around a vertical line like this, it's going to be uh, x and if you're rotating around horizontal it's going to be y and so if we go ahead and solve this v equals 2 pi then we need to find a and b so a and b are going to be where our curves intersect uh where our curves intersect in the for their x values in this case some, and sometimes they'll give you x equals a value so in this case they give us x equals a value so we know that's going to be one of our bounds but they don't always tell you that usually they just give you two curves and you have to find where they intersect in this case, they give you x equals one of them. So we know uh, this right here is going to be the, the upper bound of our curve, right? But we need to find the lower bound. So we know b is our upper bound. So this is going to be one right here, but we need to find the lower one. And so what you want to do is just take your two curves and set them equal. And that's going to usually give you both of our bounds. Uh, but in this case, they just give us one of them. So we just need to find the other. So if you take one, one curve, cube root of x, and set it equal to the other one, zero, uh, you can just solve for x, and that's going to be your other value. If you were rotating around something horizontally, you would solve for the y values. So just keep that in mind. But uh, the x value for this, you, the only one is going to be equal to 0 is just 0. So x gotta, has to equal 0. So right here is 0. This is 1. And so it's going to be from 0 to 1. And then your radius. The radius, whenever you rotate around the y-axis, is always going to be x. So keep that in mind. If you're rotating around something else that's uh, of like a different vertical line, it's going to be different. But if you're rotating around the y-axis, it's going to be x. If you rotate around the horizontal, or the x-axis, it's going to be y. So keep that in mind. And then what is our height going to be? So imagine like you're finding the area of a curve, or between two curves. What you want to do is just take your top curve, right, and then minus your bottom one. So we're trying to find this right here. So in this case, uh, our top curve, right, is the cube root of x. And so our bottom one is going to be 0, but sometimes it's like a different curve, right? It just makes it easier. So if we minus zero, it's not going to be anything. But if it was a different curve, you would have to actually subtract from it. So we just take this, right? So the what we would use to find the area between these, which is just the cube root of x. And so minus zero, right? Because that's our bottom one, but minusing zero does nothing. So times the cube root of x times uh, dx. And so uh, we use dx, right? Because we're using x variables. And so if you go ahead and solve this, uh, x times the cube root of x is the same thing as x times x to the 1 over 3. And when you multiply uh, variables like this, uh, you add their exponents. So 1 plus 1 over 3 is just going to be x to the 4 over 3. So now we just got to take the integral of this, correct? So what we want to do is add 1. So it's going to become x to the 7 over 3. And then we divide by this. So dividing by 7 over 3, it's going to become... 3 over 7 times x to the 7 over 3. And so we're evaluating from 1 to 0. So keep in mind we're multiplying by 2 pi, right? So you do this after, though, you solve it. So if we plug in 1, uh, it's just going to become 3 over 7. And if we plug in 0, it's just 0. So equals 3 over 7. Don't forget we got to multiply by 2 pi. So 2 pi times 3 over 7. It's going to give you 2 times 3, which is 6. And then times pi just 6 pi and then divide by 7 6 pi over 7 and so this right here is going to be your answer so the volume is going to be equal to 6 pi over 7
And uh, yeah, hopefully you found this useful.